What's up, my biohacking brothers and sisters? How's everybody feeling? All right, all right. How many people here are taking at least one supplement? Fantastic. That's why I love you guys. All right, so you're going to enjoy today's talk. We're going to be talking about the truth about supplements. And we're going to dive in. We're going to cover a lot. I'm going to talk pretty fast, but I'll make sure you guys get the slides if you want them. And uh, if you're a note taker, have your pen and <laughs> paper ready to go because we're going to move quickly so we get a lot in in the next 33 minutes and 56 seconds. All right. So what is biohacking? I don't have to explain this as much to you guys. This is a bit of my definition. Biohacking is the use of science, technology, and self-experimentation to upgrade the body, the mind, and your life. It's the art and science of becoming superhuman. For me, biohacking is about self-mastery. It's about taking control of your health. And we'll go into the reason why in just a second. Many of the same tools and strategies and biohacks that help world-class athletes elevate their physical and mental performance and individuals dealing with health issues restore their body's ability to heal itself also empower you and I to take our body, mind, health, and happiness to the next level. A little bit about my journey. I was involved in the health space. Like many people, I thought that it was all about nutrition and exercise. And it wasn't until I started noticing some changes in my own health in 2011 that everything opened up for me. I was, I could sleep 12 to 14 hours a day and still wake up tired. My body ached. I became depressed. Things that should work for guys were no longer working properly. And uh, I was experiencing this rapid declamation in, in deterioration in my health. Over a period of 12 months, I saw 12 different doctors trying to figure it out. I had no luck. And uh, I finally saw a natural health practitioner and functional medicine doctor in Chicago, and he asked me if I'd been tested for Lyme's disease. I hadn't. We ran a test from a lab out of California, and it came back positive. So that was the monster that we were fighting. In hindsight, I referred to it, what I was experiencing, as the symptoms commonly referred to as Lyme's disease. But... The next 18 months from that point forward were me learning as much as I could about functional medicine, nutritional neuroscience, and whatever it took to restore balance in my own body. And in doing so, I learned how to help other people do so for themselves. One of the doctors that I was working with lovingly referred to me as Humpty Dumpty because I was so broken we had to put me back together piece by piece. Um, and here's a little bit of where things have transcended from then until today. Having a little fun with some different biohacks. If you're looking to increase your energy, I want to give you my free book, The Biohacker's Guide to Upgraded Energy and Focus. Just tell us where to ship it and we'll send you your book for free. If you guys are interested in the free book, we'll send it anywhere in the world for just the cost of shipping. You can get that at biohackersguide.com. All right. The one thing I want to say before we dive in, I encourage you to research, test, challenge these assertions, and figure it out for yourself. Everything is moving towards personalized nutrition, personalized supplementation. So just because I recommend some things in this presentation doesn't necessarily mean they're right for you. My objective is to share with you some of the reasons why supplementation is more necessary today than it's ever been at any point in history, some of the challenges we face, and some of the 
primary supplements that most human beings find increase their energy and focus so that you guys leave by the end of this presentation with some key takeaways and action steps that, that you can take yourselves. So 50% of all Americans take a health supplement every day. We saw from everybody that raised their hand, it's probably about 98% of the people here. It's a $30 billion plus industry. Companies range from big pharma to mom and pop. And like the food and beverage and pharmaceutical industries, there are quality products and there are imposters. There are companies who adhere to the highest qualities and ethical standards and those who don't. Did anyone here see the Frontline special on supplements where they were showing a lot of the, the, the companies that are operating with some poor ethics and the supplements that contain dangerous uh, additives? Anyone here see that? No? Well, then we'll just skip that one. <laughs> Basically, as frequently evidenced by officials nationwide, when supplements are concerned, Americans rarely choose logic when they can opt for hysteria. You'll see many articles where people are talking about organic arsenic and the latest magnesium tea, but the safety facts between supplements and pharmaceuticals paint a very different picture. So if you look here at the number of deaths from prescription drugs, we see that each year there's between 20 and 30,000 deaths, and that's as of 2014, this number continues to rise. Some of these statistics are even higher into the six figures. When we compare that, to FDA unapproved supplements, we have zero. Less than one per year are the number of deaths that occur from unapproved supplements. Even if we take into account all of the hospitalizations that occur from supplements, it's still a tiny fraction of the deaths that occur from pharmaceutical drugs. Now, I'm not bashing pharmaceuticals, I'm just putting things in perspective for the people that are concerned about the safety profile of various supplements. We're operating based on some antiquated logic. Have you guys ever heard someone say, you don't need supplements if you just eat right and exercise? Right? Supplements don't work unless it's expensive urine you're after. Yeah? Supplements work for some people, but not for others. Right. So let's answer the question that many of us are asking, are supplements necessary? Humans in pristine natural environments living an ancestral lifestyle would likely do just fine without supplements. Our model, the problem is that our modern world is profoundly different from the environment of our ancestors. This is a picture here from the 2007 nuclear spill in Fukushima. The entire landscape of our external environment took a dramatic shift in the 1980s and 90s. And it's had catastrophic impact on our gene expression, also known as epigenetics, mitochondrial function, and our overall health. So let's get into a little bit of the nerd speak so everything here makes sense. I'm sure most of you guys are up on this because you're all brilliant and a savvy audience, but in case there's anyone that's hanging out with a friend and just visiting, we'll, we'll cover it. So what are epigenetics? Epigenetics are the study of changes in organisms caused by modification of gene expression rather than alteration of the genetic code itself. What are mitochondria? Mitochondria are the power plants in our cells that produce ATP, also known as adenosine triphosphate. What is ATP? There's only two more of these, don't worry. <laughs> ATP is the molecular unit of currency of intracellular energy transfer. So some of the environmental challenges that we face, 250 million years ago, oxygen levels were around 35%. In 1850, oxygen levels were around 22%. Today, oxygen levels are around 19%, and that is at sea level. And this is found using some of the oxygen dissociation curves with hemoglobin. Oxygen levels required for healthy human beings, 19.5%. Let's stack some things on top of that. 1760 to 1840, the Industrial Revolution gives birth to environmental pollution as we know it today. 1945, fluoride started being added to tap waters, at least in the United States. I don't think that's a problem that you guys face here in Finland. We know fluoride is a neurotoxin, and it also prevents our mitochondria from producing ATP as effectively as they otherwise would. In 1964, Robert Becker published a paper in the journal Nature proving that bone is an electric and magnetic semiconductor. That paper was the effects of electric currents on bone in vivo, if you guys want to look it up. 
In the 1980s, microwaves became affordable and a staple appliance in modern homes. Before that, they were too expensive. 1993, we see the introduction of genetically modified foods, which started with the tomato. 1995, internet became Wi-Fi, and cell phones became bi-directional microwave devices. This is the older version of the presentation, but we're going to work with it. <laughs> ah, that's good. It's all good. Um, so today we also face increased exposure to blue light via our cell phones, laptops, indoor lights, and televisions. We know that blue light suppresses melatonin. That's why so many people here are wearing those orange tinted glasses. We also know that blue light damages the DHA in our eye, which further disrupts our circadian rhythm. So today we're facing an issue of less oxygen, all of the other aforementioned environmental changes, and less oxygen we know opens up the door for anaerobic pathogens and microbes in the body like viruses, bacteria, parasites, etc. A few of the key reasons, these are a few of the key reasons why generations born in the 1980s and after are getting sicker faster than any generation in history. And these environmental changes interfere with our mitochondria's ability to duplicate, also known as mitochondrial biogenesis, and produce ATP. So now we have to ask ourselves the question, is it any coincidence that humans have more mitochondria than any other animal? And most of that mitochondrial density is concentrated in our heart, in our brain, and in our immune system. Is it any coincidence that incidents of heart disease, neurodegenerative disease, and autoimmune conditions have exploded? And they exist today at levels that far exceed any point in the history of human existence. And here we have a chart showing the growing prevalence of Alzheimer's disease, where it's at today, and where it's projected to be by 2050. So if we're discussing survival, then yes, I agree, supplements are not necessary. However, if we're talking about how to live your highest purpose and optimize your health, energy, cognition, mood, and quality of life, then supplements can be an indispensable tool in your arsenal. Here's why many of us need supplements. The produce and meat are most nutritious when they are freshest, and in almost all cases, the food in our grocery stores is weeks old by the time it makes it to our shelves. Those of you guys that were there last night at the Biohack dinner got to taste how delicious fresh fruits, vegetables, meat can be. We've seen a decrease in the diversity of vegetables and fruit species consumed and, in addition, and the addition of toxins like pesticides, herbicides, hormones, vaccines, and antibiotics in our food. Herbicides like glyphosate, which many people confuse with gluten sensitivity. Glyphosate, also known as Roundup, produced by the company Monsanto. We've seen a dilution effect showing an inverse relationship between crop yields and nutrient content. Here's an article illustrating that. Declining and vegetable nutrient comp composition, what is the evidence? And this article shows anywhere from 5 to 40% less minerals in certain groups of vegetables. We've got the heavy use of antibiotics, birth control, and other prescription medications, which can overtax the liver, stress the kidneys, and damage the gut microbiome. We've seen an increase in chronic stress and a decrease in sleep quality and duration. That only adds to these tolls. The average person sleeps 60 to 90 minutes less than we did just 50 years ago. The use of cosmetics and chemicals for cleaning exposes to parabens, BHA, BHT, phthalates, formaldehyde, lead, and other chemicals. The average American worker spends 13 to 15 hours sitting a day, and many studies have shown that sitting actively promotes dozens of chronic diseases, including obesity and type 2 diabetes. So supplements are a bridge. They're not they're not an end point. They're a bridge to a bigger environmental change that needs to be made. They can help us get back to a spot where our body can take control of the healing process if we're sick, and they can help take our quality of life to the next level if we're already healthy. Here's the problem. Over 90% of supplements contain some form of known toxin, genetically modified ingredient, dangerous filler, or allergenic compound that can offset and negate any potential benefit. Some of those hidden dangers, GMOs, we see a lot of genetically modified soy and even uh, genetically modified corn in many supplements. Dangerous binders and fillers like magnesium stearate, compromised purity, ineffective dosages and standardizations, 
low quality products, poor manufacturing standards, and toxic and synthetic versions of vitamins. Some of those toxic and synthetic versions of vitamins, we've got different variations for vitamin A, vitamin B1, B2, so I encourage you guys to look at the supplements you're taking and make sure you're taking them in the right forms, the most bioavailable forms that are compatible with your body's natural tendencies. Some more synthetic forms of vitamins to avoid. How many people here take a whey protein? One, two, three, all right, nice. Much smaller than when you're speaking in the bodybuilding circles. So let's look at whey protein, for example. When, when you're consuming whey protein, you want to make sure it's a non-denatured, bioactive whey protein from grass-fed cows. Why? Well, whey is runoff from the cheese manufacturing process. So in the States, you have cows that are fed genetically modified crops, not their natural diet. They're pumped up with hormones and antibiotics, and all of those things are then concentrated in the milk. Then we take this whey from the cheese process, cheese manufacturing process, and they sell it to us as a health supplement. So the same way that we are now paying more and more attention to the quality of our food, we need to pay that same attention to the quality of our supplements. Whey is also a gluten cross-reactant. What does that mean? Well, a company, Cyrex Laboratories, did something called the gluten cross-reactivity sensitivity analysis, and they looked at foods that contain immunogenic and allergenic proteins that cause the same issues in our body as gluten, and whey is one of the top gluten cross-reactants. Many also contain artificial sweeteners like sucralose, aspartame, and other things that can kill the good bacteria in our gut. So rule number one for supplementation, supplements should enhance rather than replace. You wanna get your nutrients from food whenever possible. Rule number two, take supplements in their natural form and avoid those synthetic versions we discussed earlier. Use supplements as a bridge rather than a band-aid. Use them while you're trying to get to the root cause of whatever it is you're experiencing or whatever's preventing you from experiencing the quality of life that you want and deserve. So here are some of the most common deficiencies, and you're gonna see how this parallels with some of the recommendations I'm gonna make here in just a few minutes. Vitamin D, best to get from sunlight, more effective than supplementation. There are downsides to supplementation. Uh, vitamin D needs to be taken with certain cofactors like vitamin K, et cetera. Magnesium, DHA, vitamin K2, selenium, iron, vitamin B12, and all of the B vitamins, particularly folate, B12, B6, B2. And iodine, again, best to get your iodine from whole food sources like Dulce, which was also a part of the menu last night at the Biohack dinner. So let's talk about magnesium glyconate here. Why is, is magnesium glyconate a beneficial compound? And I'm kind of rolling with, because some of the slides are a bit out of order, but it's all right. 56% of the US population is deficient in magnesium. Mitochondrial biogenesis requires magnesium-dependent enzymes. So if you want more energy, you want more ATP, you need magnesium as one of those cofactors. Exercise damages our mitochondria via increased oxidative stress, and magnesium can help neutralize that oxidative stress. So the biohack that I recommend and one of the supplements, which you'll see here in just a second, Calbrand magnesium glyconate. Take between 600 to 1,200 milligrams per day. You want to find the dose that produces the desired benefits without causing disaster pants. Too much magnesium can give you loose stools, so keep that in mind. Most people are taking the wrong form of magnesium, and they're not taking enough. Here's where most people go wrong. Few people ask what type of spaghetti you should use. They're just taking, they're taking spaghetti, they're throwing it against the wall, and they're seeing what sticks. Few people ask what sort of sauce sticks best. And even fewer people ask what recipe ensures the largest number of noodles stick to the wall. Proper supplement programming is a product of deep discovery. We gotta figure out what is going on with the client. We run specific blood tests, health assessments. We wanna go after this with a laser rather than a bazooka. Looking at pattern recognitions, things that, sim symptomology that other people have dealt with and how those issues have been fixed so that you could apply that to other people. Uh, you want to use, you want to have data points like blood work and health assessments, and again, it's all about customization and personalization. So you want to design a program that's based on your blood work and health assessment. If you're dealing with adrenal fatigue, thyroid issues, gut dysfunction, etc., any of the things up here, that's going to change the supplements, the supplemental tools that you want to use. So the most important supplement for humans, before we get into the ones that you can go out and buy if you want, and 
for full disclosure, I don't sell any supplements. I don't want you guys thinking that like the end of this is some pitch where I'm trying to sell you anything. This is, this is just for information purposes to help you guys. Water. Why water? Water makes up 99.9% .9 of the molecules in your cells. Yes, by volume, it's about 70%. But in terms of the number of molecules in your cells, it's 99.9%. .9 Water chemistry is what helps our body to produce energy and ATP through the food we eat, the oxygen, light, magnetism, and the corresponding flow of electricity and electrons. Water improves circulation, oxygen deliverability, and oxygen saturation. When hydrated, we more effectively absorb and assimilate nutrients. So if you are dehydrated, all of the other supplements that I'm going to mention are going to be compromised in their ability to Help, help take everything to a higher level. Water is the single most important component involved in our ability to effectively and efficiently produce ATP. If you guys are looking for more information on water, I highly recommend you pick up Gerald Pollack's book, The Fourth Phase of Water. Where most people go wrong, they increase their consumption of municipal tap water, which can be contaminated with fluorosilicic acid, FSA, which is not the real sodium fluoride that was used in the original tooth decay studies, and the FDA has recognized that fluorosilicic acid is a toxic waste byproduct uh, of making phosphate fertilizer. They also thereby, in drinking more contaminated water, increase their exposure to toxins that damage the mitochondria and elevate their body's toxic burden. Hydration biohack, make sure you're starting with clean water. You can get a, a whole house reverse osmosis filter uh, there are a number of different water hacks, but you want to make sure that your water is clean to begin with and then ideally structure it so that your water contains or, or carries the molecular structure that most effectively gets into our cells. We discussed whole house reverse osmosis filters. Whole house charcoal, charcoal filters are also effective, just not to the same degree. How much water to drink? 50 to 70% of your current body weight in ounces of water per day. So if someone weighed 100 pounds, 55 to 70 ounces of water per day is what would optimize physical and mental performance. And you want to do that away from meals as to not dilute your stomach acids. The second most important new supplement for humans, docosahexaenoic acid, or DHA, one of the um, omega-3s. Now, what's so awesome about DHA? DHA is one of the most abundant fats in the brain. Many clients have excessive omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, and that needs to be countered by taking extra omega-3s, but specifically DHA. If you want to look and see where your omega-6 to omega-3 ratios are at, there are serum tests that can help you figure that out. Um, DHA also helps to form cellular membranes and protect our nerves. It turns on genes that are involved in the production of brain-derived neurotropic factor, or BDNF, which results in neurogenesis, or the growth of new brain cells. Increased brain-derived neurotropic factor also increases our brain's neuronal resistance to free radicals and injury. DHA supports brain development and protects neurological function. It helps with cardiovascular function. And DHA and water are the two single most critical components of the mammalian battery. They make our body more conductive and they improve the flow of electrons and energy. Where to get DHA? Oysters, fish roe, wild-caught sushi, and then there are a couple supplements like Doctor's Best DHA from Calamari, Nordic Naturals Pro DHA 1000. Why raw? Because cooking can denature DHA and dramatically decrease the amount that you are consuming. Where, where most people go wrong, they try to get their healthy fats from grass-fed meat or supplements. Most of the omega-3 content in grass-fed beef is alpha-linoleic acid, or ALA, and studies show that conversions from ALA to DHA are less than 0.1%. So we're not going to get this valuable docosahexaenoic acid from consuming grass-fed beef. I've also witnessed a strong anecdotal link between clients dealing with suboptimal energy and health and a lack of wild-caught seafood in their diet. I've already covered some of the best sources. All right, so now let's cover five supplements that, will, that you guys can start taking immediately. Are we able to switch to the other presentation for this part? Is that possible? Cool. We've got some other stuff that I added to the slides this morning that you guys will like. So we're going to dive into five specific supplements that you guys can take. If we were to generically recommend 
supplements that will help improve body composition, mental clarity, focus. These are the five that have the highest probability of doing so. It's the one. Oh, no. We sent one this morning, no worries. All right, so the first is Maximum Vibrance. It's a meal replacement and greens formula. Contains lots of superfoods, many of which are rich in chlorophyll. There was a 2015 study that showed chlorophyll consumption actually functions similar in mammalian cells the way that it does in plants. It actually allows our cells to absorb and retain more full spectrum sunlight. That full spectrum sunlight does a lot related to energy production. It upregulates an enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase. Cytochrome C oxidase helps us to produce more ATP. So by consuming greens, vegetables, um, algae, chlorophyll, spirulina, things that are rich in chlorophyll, we increase our cells' ability to capture and retain full spectrum sunlight and thereby increase our body's ability to produce ATP. So number one would be maximum vibrance. The downside to it is that the taste isn't incredible, but you can mix it with some other better tasting protein powders and uh, problem solved. Number two, magnesium glyconate, reasons of which we covered earlier. Three and four, a methylating bioactive B vitamin complex. 30 to 55% of the population has a genetic variation known as MTHFR. It's, uh, they, they lack an enzyme that helps their body to convert B vitamins to their bioactive forms. These people have compromised methylation, compromised detoxification. They can have lower levels of important neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin. And until those individuals make a concerted effort to consume higher amounts of B vitamins, those things, can, they, they, they fail to thrive. So by taking a methylating B vitamin complex and particularly a B12 sublingual lozenge, uh, that can help correct those deficiencies. Why sublingual B12 lozenge? Well, a lot of B12 is degraded by our stomach acid. So by putting it under the tongue, it goes directly into the bloodstream and we bypass that challenge. Number five, Purity Products Advanced Vitamin D. Vitamin D, as you know, with, as we've moved indoors and we spend more time with the roof over our head, vitamin D deficiency has become epidemic. Purity Products Advanced Vitamin D comes with some of the important cofactors that we need to synthesize that vitamin D and make sure that it is able to be utilized by our body. And honorable mention, Bragg Organic Apple Cider Vinegar, rich in acetic acid, Apple cider vinegar has been used for thousands of years. It was one of the primary tools of Hippocrates, and it helps to kill bad bacteria in the gut and provide enzymes and nutrients and good bacteria that, that uh, help the good guys to proliferate. Some supplemental resources. Life Extension Foundation has a lot of incredible information on supplements. Biohacker's Guide, I've got an entire supplement section in the book. That's at biohackersguide.com. We've got our Biohacking Week Intensive. Labdoor is another company that has excellent supplement resources. And examine.com. And that is all I have for you guys. Thank you for your time. Uh, questions? For Mr. Di Clementi. Yes. Hey, Anthony. Really, really good talk, mate. Really like that. Uh, Thank I think you. you're probably the first person that's been on stage today and like made a connection between what's happening in the environment, you know, with GMOs, blue light, uh, EMFs affecting our health. Are we not losing the point by talking about supplements? And should our focus be on? how we can make more people aware of what's going on in the environment, how that's impacting our health, and how do you think that we can like, sort of fight that? Because there's a few other people in the audience I know that are like, familiar with stuff like Jack Cruz's work, and yeah. you know, it's all about the environment. Where you put the Al Alzheimer's graph up on the, uh, on the screen you know, that shows that rising with, as technology increases, how can we stir the pot in that, in that scene, do you think? Yeah, so specific strategies that we could use to improve our environment and reduce some of those challenges we face? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
So uh, it's probably easiest to go over uh, some of the changes that I've made recently and that, that I use with clients. Um, you guys are all, I'm sure, familiar with Flux, F dot L-U-X. It's a blue light blocking software that you can install on your computer. I run that all the time. The software comes by default where it's not running so much during the day, but at nighttime it's running. I go into preferences and make it so that it's running all the time and keeping blue light from my laptop to a minimum. Apple has added a, um, an option in settings called night mode where you can go in and have it so that most of the blue light being emitted from your cell phone, if you have an iPhone, is also reduced. Um, there are things like trimeters that measure electromagnetic fields. I recently, uh, I moved in October and went around my apartment with a trimeter uh, measuring different areas that were electromagnetic hotbeds. And some of, it was, some of it was pretty interesting. There were certain electronics that when left plugged in were kicking out very high amounts of, of EMFs. I never ever used the microwave. And when I went over to the microwave, just it being plugged in, the amount of electromagnetic fields it was kicking off was, was incredibly high. So I went into the cabinet, moved a bunch of stuff, and unplugged the microwave to, to make sure of that. I got a Faraday box for, the, uh, for my Wi-Fi router, and at some point may even just make the switch back to actual cables and moving away from Wi-Fi. But I live in a building where there are hundreds of other people. All of them have Wi-Fi. And how do you think we could be doing this at like a higher level, you know, with, like, say, policy change where we're about to jump from 4G to 5G because we're at an event like this where there's a lot of people who are conscious of the fact the environment's making such an impact on our health. Are we sort of wasting an opportunity by not sort of drawing everyone together at things like this to, I don't know, at least increase awareness? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, w I was recently watching the documentary uh, Before the Flood, the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, talking about global warming and uh, a lot of the, the detrimental effects of increased uh, carbon dioxide production. And they brought up an interesting solution, which was like a, a carbon dioxide tax. Because we all have this, this conflict where on one hand, we want to be able to get places quickly, we want to drive our cars, we want to have that convenience, but then we also don't want to destroy our environment. So by taxing some of the the, the companies and corporations that are putting out the, the largest amounts of, of CO2, it could be a potential solution that at least decreases some of those things. Now, I don't know what the answer is for electromagnetic fields and some of these other big environmental changes, but I feel like a lot of this and the, the, the conflicts and situations we find ourselves in are due to uh, monetary motivations. And by getting the right people in place and uh, and having taxation on some of these things, that would, I, I feel like that would be the start. Any other questions? Hey, um, so uh, over here. Uh, how much apple cider do you recommend to take and uh, how do you take it? Because it does taste uh, a little funny. Terrible. Yeah, it's gross. Um, good question. So for therapeutic dosages, I recommend working up to 12 teaspoons a day. That can be in divided doses. You could take it all at once. Um, what I do to mask the taste is a solution of, I make a drink with the juice from one organic lemon, and then I take, I just do all 12 at one time. For me, that's easier than doing like, Four, four teaspoons three times throughout the day. I said teaspoons, not tablespoons, right? Just to clarify, four, uh, 12 teaspoons per day. And uh, so I do 12 teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. I use a little bit of San Pellegrino because the carbonation helps mask the taste. I don't drink San Pellegrino at any other time besides when I'm, when I'm doing that drink. Squeeze the juice from the organic lemon. I save the peel and the seeds of the lemon to, to put in my shake later. Why? Because the peel and the seeds contain beneficial anti-cancer uh, anti compounds like D-limonene and Q40. Uh, they also can help with uh, creating a healthy gut microbiome. So by putting half of that lemon peel and seeds in your shake later, you can reap some of those benefits. It also has five to 10 times more nutrients than the juice. And that is my drink, and I just take it down in the morning. And uh, if, if maintenance dosage is around uh, a third of that, so four teaspoons per day. But I would do 12 
uh, 12 teaspoons per day for a period of time until you start noticing diminishing returns. Last question. Thanks for an awesome presentation. Thank uh, you. You recommended a uh, reverse osmosis filter. Um, do you have any other, other tips to add? Like, should there be some kind of mineralization after the reverse osmosis? Can you, can you expand this water filter thing a little bit? Yeah. So the, the benefits of reverse osmosis filters are that they take everything out. The downsides of reverse osmosis filters are that they take everything out, including the good stuff. So you want to remineralize that water afterwards. I, I look for three things with, with water, three critical uh, components. One is making sure the water is clean. Two is making sure the water is structured. And three is making sure that the, I try to add hydrogen whenever possible. Um, so with reverse osmosis water, for example, if it came from the tap in the States, I would run it through a machine like I have a, an Aqua True, and uh, the water comes out. I then structure that water. You can either use a device like a vortexing device like uh, Vitalizer Plus, or you can create a very simple do-it-yourself water structuring device by taking a Venturi wine aerator, and then you put some Hawaiian lava rocks in there. You pour the water through the aerator filled with the lava rocks, and then that's an easy way to structure your water. Um, after that, you can add something like concentrates or 40,000 volts, both of which help to remineralize your water, and you're pretty good to go. All right, how about a round of applause for Mr. Anthony Di Clementi. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Apologize for the slides. I appreciate you. <laughs>